blessing to be in the house of the Lord today. Come on, we're going to chase after God today. Come on, help us worship today. Amen. Song says like this. Yeah. I'm chasing after you, no matter what. Good morning, Laurie Church family, our visitors, our friends, family in other states. It is so good to be with you this morning. I pray that you're all in Denver staying warm on this cool Sunday morning. 
I don't know about you, but I love the coolness, the cold, if you want to call it cold, cold, and I love the snow. And we need that for the fires that are going on around us. So I'm thankful to God that he gave us a nice, cold, snowy day. Our scripture today is coming from Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle's. I've read to you Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this day, Lord. We thank you that you woke us up this morning, and we thank you that you allowed us once again to tune in, to just hear your word, to sing praises to you, and to worship you as you deserve to be worshiped. I thank you that you have kept us through the week. I thank you that you have provided for us, and I thank you that you have kept us safe. Lord, I'm asking your blessing upon this service this morning. I pray that as the word go forth, as the songs are sung, and they go across the airways, Lord God, that you would just bless someone's soul. So much so, Lord, that someone will want to know more about you and decide to give their life to you. Lord, I ask that you bless the man of God that's bringing the word today, that you will uh, give him the courage that he needs to present the message boldly and strongly. And as we know, your word never returns void, Lord God. I pray that it will fall on ears of those that are eager to hear your word and that we will meditate on it, that we will chew on it, and that we will share it with someone else as the week go through. So Lord, I'm asking your continued blessings. And in all things, Lord God, we will give you our highest praise. We will honor you, we will praise you, and we will glorify your wonderful, matchless name. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, all right, I do have a couple of announcements that I want to make. Don't forget, next Sunday at 2 a.m., so do it Saturday night before you go to bed, you roll your clocks back an hour. That means you get to sleep an extra hour on Sunday morning if you do this Saturday night. Don't forget. Or you may tune in and wonder where we are, and we won't have come on yet. Today also, we are honoring our associate ministers. As you see, we... I um, want to thank all of you that brought your love offerings to give to them. And during the, this pandemic, we wish we could all be in this service today, that they could be here with us. But they have contacted you during this period of time. They have sent you uh, phone calls and cards, and they have continued to do what God has called upon them to do. And we just want to give them a little small token, because we can never repay them for the work that they do. We can never repay them because they were called by God and they're doing God's work. We just want them to know that we love them and that we appreciate them. And there's Minister Mary's, Mother Mary Small, Minister Joe Wallace, Minister Hope Golden, and she is doing well, and Minister Ken Campbell. And as you see, we social distance them so that... Um, they won't catch anything. Laurie, we love you. We really do. And we, we will be together one day soon. I don't know how soon. But I'm asking you not to give up on social distancing, on hand washing, and on wearing your mask. I pray that God will keep you. But right now, I want you to get ready to join our praise team as they come forth and they prepare you for the word. So come on, Laura, let's stand up and sing. I believe in God's word. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. 
Good morning, Lowry. Oh, wait. Social distancing, masking. Wow. Wow. As I look around the sanctuary and stand here at this new podium, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed with joy. I'm just overwhelmed with joy. Thank you, Lowry. Thank you, family and friends. Um, I just want to say a few quick words to our associate ministers as we honor them and thank them on this Sunday. Thank you to Minister Ken Campbell, Minister Hope Golden, Minister Joseph Wallace, and Minister 
Mother Mary Small, thank you for your servant hearts. Thank you for all of your work, your prayers, the phone calls, your commitment to advancing God's kingdom and to serving the folks here at Lowry. We could not do what we do without you. So I just want to say thank you and ask that you all, right where you are, just give them a round of applause. Now, Deacon Portia was kind enough to tell you about ministers' appreciation, and she had wonderful things to say about our ministers. What she did not tell you was, was that today is her birthday, and so she's 25 again. And so, Deacon Portia, we want to wish you a happy birthday, and may you have many, many more that you turn 25 again next year. And so, Lowry, it is a delightful time to be here with you all. It's cold out this morning. That's when you know you're in Colorado, when one day you're wearing shorts, and the next day you are wearing a coat, hat, and gloves. But, hey, praise God that we're here anyway. I'm delighted to be with you this morning. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining with us and worshiping with us. Thank you to our praise team uh, for their beautiful songs and how they have ushered us before the Lord. So, without further ado, I want us to go into the message right now. And I'm going to ask that you all join me in reading God's Word today. If you would open up your Bibles or put your tablets on uh, and turn with me to the book of Daniel, chapter 1. The book of Daniel, chapter 1. We're going to read verses 8 through 17 in the book of Daniel. Daniel, chapter 1, verses 8 through 17. Let me give you all a few minutes to, to catch up. You all are powering up your iPads or tablets and turning pages. So when you're there, say amen. If you feel like standing, stand. If you don't want to stand in the comfort of your own, please do that. Daniel, chapter 1, verses 8 through 17. I'm going to read from the New King James Version, and it reads this way. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, now with the, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who has appointed your food and drink. For why should he see your faces looking worse than the young men who are your age? Then you would endanger my head before the king. So Daniel said to the steward, of whom the chief of the eunuchs had said over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Please test your servants for ten days and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance be examined before you in the appearance of the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. And as you see fit, so deal with your servants. So he consented with them in this manner and tested them ten days. And at the end of the ten days, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. Thus the steward took away their portion of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink and gave them vegetables. As for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. That's Daniel chapter 1 verses 8 through 17. And I want to speak to you all this morning from this thought Make up your mind. Make up your mind. You know, Ron Luce of Acquired a Fire, and he said this many years ago, we constantly see the effects of a generation that has been led by ungodly influences, peer pressure, and by people with no solid foundation in God. And as a result, we have a generation of young people, young adults, and those who are young at heart, who are hurt, who are broken, who are confused, and who are in turn hurting each other. In other words, what Ron Luce said is that we got a generation of folks who messed up. Folks who don't know up from down, right from left. They are confused, discouraged, bruised, and battered 
broken by what they see, what they experience, and they hear godly things, but they don't see godly living. They hear folks talking about Jesus, but they don't see folks who actually follow and obey Jesus. And so they're confused. And what you see in this story today are a couple of young men who were led away into exile. They were these four Hebrew boys, and they were carried away into captivity because of the disobedience of the nation. And they were carried away to a faraway country, and there they were serve the king. They were hand-selected <clears throat> by the king to go through some rigorous training that they would one day serve in his cabinet, that they would be ranking officials in his cabinet, that they would help him govern the nation in which he was the ruler. So they would go through this rigorous training, and as a part of this training, they were required or given food from the king's table. This would fatten them up, and they would be allowed to drink wine. And what's intriguing about this story is that Daniel and his compadres are young men. They're young teenage boys in this faraway country. But as you see from verse 8, it says, but Daniel. So that means that everything that happened in verses 1 through 7 Contrary to what happened in verses 1 through 7, things change in verse 8. It says, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies. Daniel made up his mind. If you are going to have a made up mind, the first thing that you must understand that there has to be some resistance. There has to be some resistance. Daniel decided, he made up his mind that he would not violate God's principles, God's oracles, and God's laws. No matter where he was, he would refuse to do that. Daniel and so many other young men in Israel were taken into captivity far away from their homeland, far away from their families to this foreign land. And as a foreign resident in this land, Daniel refused to defile himself. That word defile means to pollute himself. He refused to take in things that would distort, things that would sully, things that would dirty him according to what God had laid out for him. Daniel and his three buddies refused to eat the king's delicacies. They were brought up and trained in the right ways of God. They, they were participants in the youth group. They were participants in Sunday school and, and Bible study and all of the things that they learned from their parents growing up in the Jewish culture. They now have an opportunity to put that into practice. Their mom and daddy's not around to tell them what to do. They made up in their minds themselves that they would not violate God's principles. And what were the principles that they refused to violate? If you were to go into the book of Leviticus in chapter 7, in verses 20 through to 27, God laid out the dietary restrictions for Hebrew folk. He told them what they could and could not eat. And then if you go into chapter 11 of the book of Leviticus, there's an extensive list of the dietary restrictions for the children of Israel. And these four young men, Daniel and his friends, knew that. They knew. They were intimately acquainted with the laws that God had set up for the nation of Israel. And as they sat around in this foreign place, in this place where they were forced to assimilate, they changed their names, they changed their clothes, they changed their diet, and tried to change their customs. And to a certain degree, Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, I mean Abednego, they, 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 they followed the practices of the people there where they lived, but not all of them. They refused to eat the king's delicacies. The scripture said that they could not eat food that was, had blood or had been offered to an idol. 
They knew that this food would violate God's principles, and they decided that they were not going to do that. They were not going to break God's law. They had a made-up mind. There was resistance. It was peaceful resistance. You might want to say it was a peaceful protest, okay? They peacefully protested. They resisted the edict of the king in order to follow the laws of God. See, you have got to resist the culture and the climate around you if it violates God's principles. You have got to be able to say, no, I understand all of the stuff that's going on around me. It may look attractive. It may look fun and enticing. But what I know from God's law, it violates his principles, and I'm not going to do that. You have got to, at some point in your life, draw a line in the sand and say, I will not cross this line. They were captives. They were prisoners on the outside, externally, but internally, they were free. These young men resist the pressure and attempts of the ungodly culture around them. Some of their efforts were subtle and some of them were overt. They had conviction and they had a very strong belief that their lives must be guided by a set of principles that are rooted in the word of God. If you're going to peacefully protest, if you're going to peacefully resist, if you're going to push back against the counterculture, then you have got to have some principles. You've got to have some guidelines. You've got to have some values that are rooted in the word of God. It is one thing to go with the crowd, it's a whole nother thing to just go with Jesus. And sometimes you got to go by yourself. Sometimes you got to be willing to let the crowd go and say, no, I can't ride with y'all on this one. If it violates God's laws and God's principles. These men, we don't know anything about their families, but what we do know about these young men is that they love the Lord and they were willing to, to resist and push back in a peaceful and a respectful way way. I don't know if you all remember the miniseries Roots with Alex Haley. Some of y'all got to think back. Some of y'all wasn't even born when it came out. But some of you were born and you remember Roots. You remember Kuta Kente? That no matter what they did to Kuta Kente, he was always trying to resist. Kunta Kente would resist to the point that they would beat him, and they changed his name from Kunta Kente to Toby, and he resisted that until they beat him, until he couldn't take any more. And out loud he would say Toby, but inside he was still Kunta Kente. He resisted. You know, even to the point where he would run, and they cut off half his foot, and he said, the lady, his wife said, you're going to learn to walk again. He said, no, I'm going to learn to run again because I am not going to fit in this system. He did not comfortably fit into the culture and the society of slavery. He resisted it. Did he ever get free physically? No, but he did push back and he resisted. You and I have got to be free. We may not be able to escape the culture, but we don't have to fit into the culture. You don't have to move to another country. You don't have to go live in some desolate island by yourself, but you can be isolated while you're sitting around a bunch of folk. And you have got to be able and willing to resist. Kunta Kente, when he died, the folks remembered him as the old African. They didn't remember him as Toby, the slave, they remembered him as the old African who never forgot where he came from. He never forgot what he was taught. Young folks, I'm going to tell you all today, don't forget what you've been taught. You've got to learn to resist, and you have got to recall, and you have got to remember what's right and what's wrong. I don't care what people say. I don't care how good it feels. I don't care how good it looks. Resist it. Resist it because the penalty can be dire. The consequences can be long lasting. You got to have a spirit of resistance. And I find it interesting that folks will take to the street and protest. And there's nothing wrong with a protest as long as it's a peaceful protest. But we will protest 
the death of somebody that we ain't never met, somebody that we ain't never encountered. But when it comes to the ways of God, we just lay down. We don't say nothing. We don't resist and we don't protest. Your marching, your protesting is not going to bring George Floyd back. Your resisting and protest is not going to bring Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Aubrey, and any of the rest of them back. But you need to make sure that your life is in order. And when do you develop the courage to resist the wrong things in order to embrace the right thing? So make up your mind that you're going to be a peaceful resistor when it comes to doing wrong. Not only do you have to resist, you got to take some risk. When you look at this passage in verse 11, it says, So Daniel said to the steward whom the chief of the eunuchs had set over him, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Please test your servants for 10 days and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance be examined before you in the appearance of the young men who eat the portion of the king's delicacies. And as you see fit, so deal with your servants. So he consented. The, the, the chief eunuch said, no, I'm not going for that deal. Daniel, you don't understand. Brother, I work for the king. If I allow you to eat vegetables and water, if I don't give you the food from the king's table and you don't look right, if you don't fall in line, the king ain't going to just come down on you. He's going to come down on me. And so Daniel still determined that he was not going to violate God's law, he made up his mind, he and his boys made up their mind that they was going to do the right thing. So it says that they go to the steward. The steward reported to the chief eunuch, but God gave them favor and compassion. And that is what gave Daniel the unction to take a risk. He decides that, you know what, I'm going to go for this thing. There was a bold move on Daniel's part. He could have refused and starved himself to death. He could have gotten up and said, forget it. I'm going to just get in, just give in and eat the food and drink the wine that the rest of the guys from our homeland are doing. I could do that. But Daniel took things a step further. When he didn't get the response from the chief, he went a step further. Now, parents... You know when you tell your kids no, and then they turn around and go to the mama or the daddy and ask them for something that you just told them no to? That's called the sides playing against the middle. They try to work both sides. If you don't give me what I want, I'm going to go ask daddy. Maybe daddy give me what I want because he's banking on the fact that mama and daddy ain't talked. Or they'll go talk to mama and ask mama when daddy said no. And then they're going to be in trouble. That's what Daniel did. Daniel took a risk, and he went and said to the chief, hey, give us a test. We ain't going to eat the food, but we don't want nothing bad to happen to you. So guess what? If you would just give us 10 days, just give us fruits and water for 10 days. We got a whole new fast now. It's called the Daniel fast, where you don't do nothing but eat fruits and vegetables and water. I tried that. So let me just say right off the bat, let me just tell y'all this. If I was in Daniel's place, I probably would have eaten from the king's table because I'm weak like that, okay? So I got to make up my mind right now because it'd be hard for me to pass up some fried chicken, some barbecue ribs, and some steaks and some scrimps. Come on, y'all. Come on with me. Y'all know that. I know that ain't the right way to say shrimp, but follow me with this one. The temptation was there, but they came up with a plan. They were willing to risk it all. They were willing to risk being denied. They were willing to risk to be killed, to be murdered, to be martyred for the right things. They took a risk. Some of us don't want to take risks. Some of y'all young folks, y'all scared to take risks for the right things. Now, y'all take risks for the wrong things all the time. I mean, y'all have no problems skipping a class or skipping school. Like the like they're not going to find out. 
They have ways to track you. And they call your parents and let you know, let them know, you missed this class at this time, this day. We take risks doing all kinds of things, sneaking out the house like our parents ain't going to find out. We take all kinds of risks doing stupid stuff, doing dumb stuff for a little bit of fun. Y'all don't have to say, man, because I ain't talking to just the teenagers. I'm talking to everybody. Some of us take risks right now when we don't pay our taxes, when we misreport the stuff on our taxes. We take risk right now doing all sorts of things, but they're the wrong things. You and I must be willing to take risk for the right things. And if you and I are willing to stick our necks out for the things of God, God will give us favor. He said that the scripture says that God gave them favor with the chief steward. He gave them favor with the steward, and the steward said, okay. I'm willing to take the risk because there's something about you. There is something different about you. You have a different look. You have a different character. The way you carry yourself, the way you portray yourself, the way you handle yourself is very different from everybody else. There was something about Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Ezra that they were different from the other guys because they were bold and courageous and willing to taste the risk. They stood out. Don't you understand that when you and I stand for godly principles that we stand out? We don't look like everybody else. Guess what? You can wear the saggy jeans and you can wear the hoodies and the sweatshirts and the, the Jordans, the 23s, the 11s, the 5s, the 6s, whatever your preference is. It's not what you wear necessarily, but it is more about your character that makes you stand out. Let me tell you something. There's something that'll make you stand out that is so easy. Just something simple as saying yes and thank you. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. And no, sir. Those things set you apart from everybody else. And I find it so interesting that so many young people talk about how different they are from everybody else. And ain't nobody like them, but y'all look the same. Everybody wear the same clothes, got the same fashion, the same style. The hip hop culture and the gang culture look so much alike, you don't know the difference. How are you going to stand out? Am I telling you not to sag your jeans? I don't care if you sag your jeans or not. I don't particularly want to see it. I don't particularly like it, but them your jeans. You ain't going to see me sagging my jeans. Wear what you want to wear. But what really makes you special is when you are willing to take the risk to do the right things. When you and I take the risk to do the right thing, God gives us favor with people of influence. God gives us favor with people who, who, who can help us. God gives us favor with people who can help advance us. God gives us favor with people that are over us. Teachers and coaches and bosses and administrators and counselors, all kinds of people that can help point you into your destiny. God gives you favor with those people when you have some resistance, you have some resolve, and you are willing to take a risk. Let me tell you something. Here's something you could take a risk in right now. Why don't you take a risk in trying to excel? Take a risk in saying, you know what? I'm going to make it to class every day. I'm going to go to school every day. Even though I might be going to school online, I'm going to turn in all of my homework on time. See what happens with your teachers and your administrators. See what happens with your parents when you take the risk to do the right things. So many of us are cowardly when it comes to doing the right thing. But we're bold and courageous when it comes to wrong. Resist, take risk, and lastly, watch what happens. Not only do you take risk, when you make up your mind, God rewards the behavior. In verses 16 and 17, this is what it says. Thus the steward took away their portion of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink and gave them vegetables 
As for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Because they refused to eat the king's delicacies, because they took a risk and went to the steward and said, test us for 10 days. After the 10 days, they ate nothing but vegetables, fruit, and drank water. They looked better and healthier than all of the other young men around them. And the eunuch said, you know what? Y'all could stay on this diet. Y'all could continue to, to stay on this diet. I see that you all are healthy. You are respectful. So I'm going to honor you, and I'm going to show you even more favor. And it says in verse 16, the steward took away the portions of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink and gave them vegetables. He even removed the thing that once enticed them. The thing that could have caused them to sin, the, 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 the steward moved it out the way and gave them vegetables so that way they can honor their God. This is what this was about. This wasn't about eating cheeseburgers. This was not about eating Wendy's or Burger King. This was about honoring God in how they lived. Even though their parents were not there to oversee what they were doing, they said, we are going to live godly lives no matter where we are, no matter who's around, and no matter who's watching. That is what they did. Now, this is where God kicks in. In verse 17, it says, as for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. God blessed them. The steward blessed them, but God blessed them. The steward gave them permission to eat vegetables and water, but God gave them special ability. He gave them skill sets that they never dreamed or imagined that they could have. God gave them what the king was trying to give them. God increased their capacity to learn. God gave them knowledge and skill and wisdom. He gave them understanding. He gave them the ability to understand, to articulate, to write, to figure out problems, to maneuver, to work with people, to be in good relationships, to work in harmony with people. He gave them all of that. See, the king's plan was to send them for school for three years. But God gave them supernatural ability. If you want the ability to exceed, to excel in whatever you are doing, do the things that please God. Resist and take risk. God will bless you. God will honor you. God didn't even send them back to their homeland. He just allowed them to grow where they were planted. He gave them what they needed to excel, and they could thrive where they were. They became better employees. They benefited the king. They benefited. They rose in ranks. They grew, and they became officials in the king's cabinet. They were more valuable to the king. He positioned them to rise in the company. If you want to raise, if you want to advance, you want to climb the corporate ladder, do things the right way. Don't take shortcuts. Don't cut corners. Don't cheat. Don't steal. Don't lie. Just do the right things. Have some principles that you stand on and watch and see how God will bless your life. He may not necessarily move you out of the situation. He'll just move you up in the situation and cause you to be a blessing to people that's trying to hold you down. Not only will you be blessed, but they can be blessed in the process. Now, the question is, do you know the principles. Do you have the standards that's outlined by God to get the, pro, the promotion and the advancement that you crave? Folks, don't miss your blessing trying to fit in with everybody else. Don't miss your blessing because you waffle. Don't miss your blessing because you are going from here and there and you're trying to please people. Just make up your mind you're going to follow God and let God take care of all your problems. Make up your mind to follow God and watch him work in and through your life. Make up your mind to follow God. Watch him advance you. Watch him increase you. Watch him grow you up. Watch him develop you. Watch doors of opportunity open for you because you have made up your mind that you're going to serve God no matter what. No matter what the threat is, no matter what people say against you or say about you. Determine in your heart. Have some resolve that you are going to follow God.
And if you do that, I promise you that the God who sits high and looks low will step into your situation and he will bless you. He will promote you and cause you to rise when there's no avenues to do that. The question for you and me today is, is what are some things that we need to make up our mind about? Do you and I know enough about what God says that we know the right things to say yes to and the things to say no to? And sometimes the things that we need to say yes to or no to are some of the people that we hang out with. Sometimes it's the people that are around us who are going to bring us down. But it's also sometimes the people that are around us that will help lift us up and hold us accountable. If you notice that Daniel didn't try to do this by himself, he had his three boys with him, and the four of them rode together. So you're going to need accountability. You need some strong Christian brothers and some strong Christian sisters that's going to ride with you, that's going to incur with you, that's going to stand with you and help you to be strong in moments of weakness, in moments of doubt. Find you some accountability partners. Find you some real, true friends that you can be honest with and that you all can commit to connect with and say, together, let's serve God. Make up your mind. I'm going to close with this. In Joshua 24, 15, as Joshua was exiting off the scene and he gave his farewell address to the nation of Israel, he says, choose for yourselves this day whom you're going to serve. The gods that y'all brought over from Egypt, that y'all hide in y'all's house and y'all's tents, or the God who delivered you from Egypt. But as for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. Joshua had a made up mind when he talked to the nation of Israel. My question to you is, do you have a made up mind today? If you have not, make up your mind to follow God and don't fit in with the culture. Be counter to a counterculture. Amen. If you are listening to my voice today and you desire to surrender your life to God, if you need made up your mind that you're going to give your life to Christ today, all you have to do if you're watching online and you're doing this for the very first time, hit the salvation button. If you're in need of prayer, just hit the prayer button. We've got people online that are willing to pray with you. We want you to know that God loves you, and so do we. We're praying for you. We're committed to praying for you, and we long to see you here in our sanctuary one day soon. So until we get an opportunity to meet again, would you all be blessed and always remember that God loves you, and so do we.
Well, have you made up your mind? I hope you have. But he's given you something to think about this week. Thank you, Pastor, for that wonderful message. And I know it was meant for someone out there in particular. And I hope you heard the word. And for the rest of us, we can always glean something from the word of God. So you just meditate on and share it with somebody. Now, listen, we have about nine, eight days before our election day. If you have not voted, please do so. And listen, we here at LARA, we don't care who you vote for. We don't care what you vote for. We just want you to voice your opinion by voting. And then I just found out that Elder Q has checked it out. And if you've got your ballot and you haven't been able to get it turned in, contact him. He can turn in up to 10 ballots. So if you have not uh, gone to drop off your ballots, please contact him and he will find a way to get your ballot turned in if you can't get out. But for the rest of you young people, and it is very important that you young people vote, very important. You are our future. You will determine what this world is like. And so we need to hear from you as well. So with that said, I pray that God will continue to bless you this week. I hope you find something every day to be thankful for, something that makes you smile. And if you can't think of anything, call me. My number is in the directory. I'll find something to make you smile. So until we meet again next week, remember, wash your hands, wear your face covering, and social distance. God will take care of us, but he also wants us to do our part as well. So God bless you. God keep you. And remember, God loves you. And so do we here at Lara Community Christian Church. God bless you.